and I'm gonna bring you guys along with me. We have our GoPro and we're gonna bring you live. Once again, lawmakers took up this issue and once again, they hit the delete button. They took out the part that would have required state universities to honor coding as a foreign language when it came time for college admission. So whether it's two in the afternoon or two in the morning. Uh, we're out at Northport High School this morning. And before we do that presentation, check uh, this out. It is a live mannequin challenge. You see the, uh, oh the my. whole group, wow, <laughs> that is gathered there. They oh, are trying to shout live on television. She came into this parking lot, which sits between Pinellas Park City Hall. Only bright side do we get the access to be in the tunnel at Amelie Arena. Oh. Chad is our camera guy. I want you to watch your step here. But Sean, how cool is this? This would be even a cool trip. We're taking thousands of photos. Then there's the bank account information. And you don't want to forget about social media. <laughs> Southwestern sky right now. And my photographer, Chad, saying that that it's it's out there. You said you saw it, Chad. Yeah, so do you see it? It's up there. It's moving from the southwestern sky to the northeastern sky. It <laughs> We're gonna actually take you along for the ride this time. We got our GoPro hooked up. It's gonna be a lot of fun. This is video shot by our photographer Chad Cromwell. You see him? See him right there. Great view. Coming in hot. And here we go. I'm gonna follow Andre down. And we're off. And women on the street may not always have access to hygienic supplies. So right now, two of the women that we are with in this vehicle um, already jumped out and they are going to approach one of the women that they saw on the street. The, the, the scary thing was is that he was charming, you know, that makes me think that he was a John. You know what I mean? Because he was very articulate. She's very out of it. I mean, I don't even, I don't even think she's going to remember that conversation. Some women move on really quickly, and some women you might get five, ten minutes with, but that's probably it on a Friday night. So we're stopping now um, because the ladies just spotted a woman on the street. So uh, we need a gift bag. We need an outreach bag. I just really wish that that guy didn't walk up because maybe there was something she wanted to say. She asked me if I was pregnant, um, so that was a little bit of a talking point. When we walked up to her, she was kind of waving down a car and like just trying to, I can only assume, sell herself. Nebraska Avenue isn't forgotten. Um, that this is for us like a way to show women that we're, that they're seen. People come and visit and they immediately are like, what is yeah, wrong with what is city? happening? Like, and we're like totally blind to it. It does open your eyes and it makes you look at your city a little differently. And it's really the heartbeat of Tampa. Like we need to look closer to like our city and like what makes our, what's happening on our own streets. We are waiting on an answer that only TPD could give us.
An answer on what really happened to 23-year-old Dusharn Weems the night of October 20th. Very, very frustrating. Because it's always hard to lose a loved one, no matter the backstory. Police say Weems was in a stolen car when they tried to stop him at 30th and Bougainvillea. He ditched the car near Bush Boulevard and ran into a parking lot just as police were pulling in. Mr. Weems came from the side and collided with the side of the car. Um, it is our understanding that then he, he fell down and, and hit his head on the pavement. Um, it seems pretty clear that it was an accident that resulted in a severe head injury. But that version of the story just does not sit right with loved ones and those representing them. Was he hit in order to prevent him from running? He was fleeing or was it just an accident as we are being told? When they took him to the hospital, he was immediately put on life support, hooked up to 21 different machines. Okay, the part that bothers me is the family was not notified by TPD. At least not right away, and neither was the public. Weems was hit October 20th. The family found out a few days later, but TPD did not tell the public until November 22nd. That's concerning. That's problematic. Over, over a month, and it's, if it's not because of the noises that the representatives for the family are making, who knows if we would have gotten a media alert ever. We talked to TPD about the delay. I do think that people would have a question of transparency in terms of why it took so long just for the community to know about it. It is a judgment call, and that's a judgment that I made. I think the most important thing is that we met with the family. I've been asked by TPD to withhold judgment, and I am doing that. I think we all need to be responsible in a way to get to the truth. That's what I want. The chief said that we'll find out at the end that they are being honest, but when is the end? I mean, when will we get the answers? Well, that's a classmate, see? This man is a hero. And that's me right here. That's a single engine pilot. And the only cape he ever needed was the American flag. Before you sit, I would just like to shake your hand and thank you so much. For well, taking thank the time you for being here. And mm. thank you for your service. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Meet Lieutenant Colonel George Hardy of Sarasota. At 92 years old, he's one of the youngest Tuskegee Airmen alive. Until Tuskegee Airmen, Tuskegee Airmen started, the word in the, in the military was that blacks can't fly. Segregation ruled everything. The services were rigidly segregated, just like in the South. How did you reconcile wanting to go into the service and serving a country that continued to discriminate against? It was our country too. It was our country and we felt we had a right to fight. And we wanted to prove that we could, and we did. And even though airmen like Hardy fought for freedom abroad, Jim Crow was waiting at home. One reason why many supported what was called the Double V Campaign. And that's right, this would be double victory. Victory overseas and victory back home, say. But when we came back, you know, it was the same. So to many black veterans, being patriotic and criticizing the country are nothing new. Over here, there seems to be an extra bit of hatred towards black people. Police brutality. They just go out of the way to uh, treat black people differently. But the juries don't find them guilty. We see a lot of controversy today uh, with the NFL most recently. What do you think about their approach? I don't like it because uh, I fought for this country in three wars, in uh, World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. I lost a number of friends during those periods. And, uh, and I always thought something special about the, uh, the national anthem and the flag. However, once the president got involved, then I had sympathy for them because I think that he should not have been involved at all. Uh, these people are protesting, they have a right to protest. What does this country mean to you today? The country means everything to me. We prove that black people can do anything that white people can do. <laughs> As if throwing a sharpened piece of steel at a wood target wasn't exciting enough. Now, they're throwing in the dark. To live in the ordinary here, we like to do things that are fun, unique, different. So, uh, yeah, just regular axe throwing wasn't enough for us. We decided to do it in the black light, and we have a good time out here. I thought this was an awesome experience, definitely not what I expected. Like, it's not something you just do every day, you don't 
you know, normally go inside and just pick up an axe and throw it at the wall. It's something different to do. You can do it with friends, families, a girls' night out. A coach will be working with you the entire time. You don't need any experience to come and do glow throw and enjoy it. Regular axe throwing is a lot of fun too, but as soon as you turn those lights off and turn the black lights on, it turns into a party type atmosphere. We tape the axes up so that they glow, put on body paint and face paint, um, and have a really exciting time. And there's just something about getting painted up that brings out that primal instinct and gets you ready to throw an axe. Uh, Did I make it? Yeah. <laughs>